Good afternoon or good morning as you join us here at St. Francis of Assisi for this liturgy for this weekend of this first Sunday of Lent. We welcome all of you and we're parishioners, neighbors, or beyond the Binghamton area. We welcome you. We are one in the body of Christ. So in that spirit, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ who calls us to conversion and a change of heart. The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. Today, this first Sunday of Lent, as we enter into this sacred season, and season of grace, our gospel and our readings today remind us of the consequences of sin in our life and Jesus' temptation in the desert that overcame the temptations and for us to, to overcome the temptations in our lives of pride, prestige, and power. And so as we enter this liturgy today, let us open our hearts uh, to God's mercy and forgiving love as we pray in the silence of our hearts. Lord Jesus, you wash us of the guilt of sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you create a clean heart for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you renew for us a steadfast spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> All Grant Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by the paw of by the and by a worthy conduct pursue their efforts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Welcome Joe Carpenter, who is our elector here today for this liturgy for this weekend. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breast breath of life. So man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the tree, the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy. 
mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O oh God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit Take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. Up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come? But the gift was not like transgression. For if by the transgression of one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to, run, came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in the life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as though the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is with you. With your spirit. A reading for the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command thee that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, 
If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up a very high, to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, all these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, get away, Satan. It is written, the Lord your God shall worship you and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Our 40 day journey in Lent is like Jesus' own 40 days in the desert that we just heard in the Gospel. We too are called to confront our temptations, the same temptations as Jesus, but temptations that are in a 21st century garment. The reality of sin and temptation are front and center, as we can tell in the, on this first Sunday of Lent. The book of Genesis today places us in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve enjoy the beauty of creation and live in harmony with God and each other, as well as the beauty of paradise, Eden. Then what happens? Humankind breaks this harmony takes matters into our own hands, feeling we know more than God. According to the scriptures, these three vital relationships with God, with neighbor, and with the earth have been broken, both outwardly and within us. This rupture is what we call sin. This harmony between the creator, humanity, and creation as a whole is, was disrupted by our presuming to take the place of God and refusing to acknowledge our creaturely limitations. This in turn distorted our mandate to have dominion over the earth. As quoted in Laudato C, Pope, and Sick, Pope Francis encyclical on the environment. Elizabeth Johnson, a theologian, writes this, the fundamental sin is exploitation, whether it is expressed in domination of male over female, white over black, rich over poor, strong or weak, armed military over unarmed civilians, human beings over nature. The sin of Adam and Eve is both personal as well as social. Their personal sin also resulted in social sin. When we, exam, when we examine our consciences before confession, or possibly at the end of a day, we certainly focus in on our personal sin. We're used to that, like being uncharitable or lying, disobeying. In other ways, we have day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyles that maybe be sinful at times in our relationships with one another. But our personal sin too morphs into social sin. They give rise to social situations and institutions that are contrary to the divine goodness. Social sin are expressions of, are expressions and effects of personal sin. When we teach or speak about the reality of sin, it usually stays on that personal level that we're so used to. What we learned in learning uh, our examination of conscience for first reconciliation, first communion, and in school. And it usually stays on that personal level and never gets on to that social reality of sin. And I have to confess that in many ways, it's the fault of priests, teachers, and religion, that we haven't really done our job to make a better, to know that better relationship of social sin. So we have racism is a social sin. Poverty is a social sin. War is a social sin. Climate change and global warming and environmental justice 
our social sins. Humankind, each of us personally and all of us together, in cultures and companies and nations have been entrusted with the ability to make decisions that have enormous consequences. And so often we build structures and systems around our own sinfulness. And there is systemic and structural sin. These decisions affect us as individuals and as a community, and also the planet on which we live. This time of Lent reminds us of that capacity. It calls us to ponder the consequences of our decisions and what is taking place in our world today. Just over three years ago, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church was updated, adding to the sins to be examined in our lives is that of ecological sin. Pope Francis made this addition as a way that would help us as Catholics to be more aware of the detrimental practices such as over-consuming resources, lifestyles that promote a culture of waste, indifference to the suffering of people impacted by climate change and actions that lead to the extension of the species. In his encyclical Laudato Si, I've shown this a number of times, but his encyclical Laudato Si, I care for our common home, is a powerful letter uh, that shows what is happening to our environment and how the people of faith we are, as a people of faith, that we are to be good stewards of God's creation. There's a wonderful passage that uh, he has here he, in the first part of this uh, encyclical, talks about what's taking place in our, in our environment, in our world. And uh, this well-known verse from the beginning of this uh, encyclical, Pope Francis writes, the earth our home is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Very descriptive. This first Sunday of Lent suggests that we see ourselves as Adam and Eve standing before our beautiful creation, as using the power we have being used, and the power we have is it being used as we should. Are we exploiting creation with our sinful policies and lifestyles. What responsibility are we accepting for these consequences? Adam and Eve made decisions on the basis of what pleased them, but in doing so, they inflicted deadly consequences upon humankind. Jesus, as we heard in the gospel, was tempted to make decisions that would bring him comfort, prestige, and power. However, he refused, and so became a source of life and salvation. These are the very same temptations we have today, and especially when you look at the environment of power, prestige, and comfort. You know, those are temptations we are duped into, but yet look at the effects it has on the environment. Lent gives us an opportunity to reflect on our decisions and on their consequences in the past, the present, and the future. In these weeks of Lent, we are invited to take time to see how we can be more responsible to our sisters and brothers near and far, those born and yet to be, and to all of God's creatures with whom we share our beautiful planet, our common home. Lent is also a time for conversion, as we know, a conversion from our personal sins, and as well as our social sins of environmental injustice. Pope Francis in his encyclical Laudato Si calls us to be to a ecological conversion, ecological conversion, meaning a change of heart as we see the plight of our environment and climate. Ecological conversion is defined as the transformation of hearts and minds toward a greater love of God and each other and creation. It is a process 
of acknowledging our contribution to the social and the ecological crises and acting in ways that nurture communion, healing and renewing our common home. So you may be asking, well, what can I do? You know, and certainly when we look at this environmental crisis, global warming, um, it all seems daunting. It seems more than we could do. What difference could I make? Well, we all can make differences and make a difference. And I always say one way, if you haven't read this encyclical, to read it. You know, it's easy to read, and it's very informative, and it gives us direction. Another way is the, on this encyclical, just this past October 4th, a film documentary was released called The Letter. And the encyclical of Pope Francis is called also A Letter. And the film is called The Letter, A Message for Our Earth, is beautifully done and gives a deep appreciation of Pope Francis' encyclical. You can view this on YouTube, but also we're doing here in the parish of St. Francis, um, a Lenten video series. This Tuesday, February 28th, is the first of four videos that we will be showing on different topics regarding uh, social, social sin. And so the first videos this Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon or 7 p.m., a look at, uh, we'll be viewing the letter, the documentary, film documentary I just showed, was speaking about. Uh, this film features Pope Francis dialoguing with activists from the Brazilian Amazon, from India, Senegal, and the United States. It shows what, how the environment and global warming is affecting places such as those places in Senegal, India, the Brazilian Amazon, and in our own uh, country as well. So make this Lenten season a time to reflect and see the challenges of global warming and climate change as our moral and spiritual responsibility to be just co-creators with God the Creator. May our Lenten practices not focus on me, but on how I, we, can change to live compatibly with creation. In conclude with this quote again from the encyclical as we celebrate this Eucharist. Indeed, the Eucharist itself, an act of cosmic love, yes, cosmic, Pope Francis states, because even when it is celebrated on the hum a humble altar of a country church, the Eucharist is always in some way celebrated on the altar of the world. Professing our faith, then, we will pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus taught us to live on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And so we look to God to satisfy our, our every hunger. Please respond, <clears throat> excuse me. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For one another, that the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving of Lent may bring forth a new springtime of faith in our lives, we pray. God of mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with attraction to wealth, power, and control, that God will free their hearts and guide them to a life of faith and trust, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy hear our prayer. prayer. For those who struggle with addiction, that the Spirit of God will help them recognize the harm that follows from addictive behavior and give them strength to make life-giving choices, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For deeper respect for the world which God has created, 
that we may recognize the land, water, and air as God's gifts to all the human family and be good stewards of them, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy hear God. our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, which entered its second year, that a way forward may be pursued with a new strategy for peace and a change of heart with the leadership in Russia, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all victims of gun violence, that God will heal their physical and emotional wounds, give eternal rest to those who have died, and inspire us with new ways to end violence in our society, we pray. God, God have mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the greater respect of all human life, that we may honor God's gift of life, promote the dignity of each person, and work to end capital punishment, we pray. God, God have mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will rejoice forever in the kingdom of heaven, we pray. God, have mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions, as we recall in silence. We pray. God, God have mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, here after your Son resist to temptation in the desert, you send angels to minister to him. Strengthen us in our resistance to temptation. You send angels to minister to us as we ourselves minister to those in need. To your Son and our Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands that may will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God and forever. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work and toil of our brothers and sisters' hands in the vineyards will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. For our good and good of all his holy church. church. Amen. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, to make these gifts and offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord is with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast be a pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the, all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we may pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and unwillingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When the seven away, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins, through this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith, 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Douglas, our bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be cars to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The hope of coming to God's kingdom, we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Gracious to get peace in our days by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of our divine Christ be with each of you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Let's take a moment pray for peace. And as mentioned, the prayer of the faithful, pray for peace in Ukraine. It's the second year of this war. The Lamb of God, who take, take away the sin of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who has reconciled us to God and to one another, taking away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, 
and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. With your bowed heads and respond amen to this prayer. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. On our website, you can find a link there to view or see um, our Lenten video series if you wish to uh, know more information about that. As I said, the first one is this Tuesday at the Paris Hall uh, at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. All are invited. And also, um, you can find these two on your own, but uh, we thought we'd good, be good to get together and do some discussion after each of the videos. So, hopefully, see you there. May Almighty God bless and keep us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in peace, and may this first week of Lent be a season of grace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, and let's keep one another in prayer. God bless. strangers to each other, no longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care, by the strength of those who care. We are companions on the journey. And we are called by the word of the Lord To act with justice, to love tenderly And to walk humbly with our God To walk humbly with our God We are companions on the journey